Hi Grinsters, my name is Robert. I'm in the wheel building department here at Grin Technologies. We're going to build a wheel unlike other wheels that you see in the industry where triple cross is the norm. We are going to build a single cross wheel. Our motors are large compared to the rims and when we use single cross, we get a better angle at the rim to avoid breakage. Here in my wheel building shop, I have everything I need to build a wheel really fast like I do every day. I have a truing stand, I have a spoke cutter, I have a, a tensionometer, a dishing gauge. All of these things are excellent, but you don't absolutely need them in order to build a wheel at home. You can use a bicycle fork for a truing stand, and I'm gonna list some other very simple things that you'll have at home that you can use to build a wheel. Here are the spokes that we use here at Green. These are single butted spokes, so-called, because the spoke is a continuous size to here and a large thick end. Let's move to your living room. We're building a single cross wheel today. Each spoke crosses over a number of spokes. In this case, just one, making it easy lacing. We have an online spoke calculator and it will help you choose the spoke length that you need for the components. In this case, we're using an easy front motor. I have an Alex 24 inch rim. Both of these products are 36 holes and I have 36 Sapim spokes to go in there. We're also going to make sure that the elbow is on the outside. What that does is provide a wider base of stability. This makes the wheel more stable, stronger side to side. Two sets of spokes, they're slightly different length in this case because the spokes on the left hand side are a little bit shorter to accommodate a disc brake. Sometimes on a rear wheel, it's the reverse. You'll need room on the right hand side for a cassette or a free wheel. We have a spoke that has been ground down a little bit on one end. You can do this on a grinder. You can do it by hand with a file in just a few minutes. And what that does is allows you to hold a nipple. And then when you're feeding it through the rim, insert. The nipples right now, I soak them in oil in order to get the outside of the nipple where it rubs against the rim oiled and the inside of the nipple where the threads are oiled. This means that you can get it tight more easily. So first thing I'm going to do is feed in the first set of spokes using my left side spokes on the left side of the wheel with the elbow out like that. Next part of the deal is figuring out where you're going to put this first batch of spokes. First thing we want to do is find the valve hole. Valve hole is that guy right there. The hole where the valve goes in. Uh, this rim, as many rims do, um, has offset spoke holes. They're actually not in a straight line going all the way around. They're fairly close on this particular rim. Many rims have a great deal of offset, meaning the spoke that's going to go to the left side of the hub over here is actually going to be in a hole that's closer to that side of the rim, and the next hole is closer to this side of the rim, and the next hole back over there, and so on. Mixing it up and crossing it over can make life difficult later on when you're trying to trim the wheel. So we're gonna take the spokes, we're going to cross them once, we're going to place those two in there like that. Then we're going to take our handy dandy holder or our fingers for the first few and put the nipple on. Make sure that you thread the nipple on firm. Just a few threads. Doesn't have to be all the way down because we're going to deal more with that later. Make sure it's right on there, two, three turns. Take the next two on the same side. Now you skipped holes here. You're going to have to skip more holes here in order for consistency. Keep lacing each spoke the same way. The one that's heading this way, it goes over the other spoke. At this point, it's starting to get more difficult to reach my fingers to the head and the top of the spoke. We're gonna 
add a little trick. We're going to take this guy and we're just going to put a little bend in it. Don't be afraid to flex the spokes a little bit to make it easier to reach and point. Okay, so now I have all of the spokes for one side laced in, we call it lacing. As you can see right now, it's kind of hanging and it's floppy. That's okay. I'm going to turn it over. I need to stuff the wire. Turn it down there. So what we want to do to keep the wheel from uh, staying up too high, we want to keep it more even. We want to flex the ends of the spokes downwards. Press, press right in this area here. Just press down. The spokes that were upper before are now lower because we flipped the wheel. We're going to take the first two spokes. We're going to drop them in. Then we're going to take those two guys and bring them the valve hole. Okay, we have the wheel laced up. And then we want to do the same thing, just gently push down on those spoke groups so that they come out as straight as possible towards the rim from the hub. So we're going to bring the nipple to the end of the thread on every spoke all the way around the wheel 36 times. This is going to help center the wheel and make it easier for you to continue building. Taking the spoke key, I'm just going to turn it until the top of the nipple matches the end of the threads that you can see. Okay, so I've laced this up and I started tightening the spokes as I described so that the nipples came to the end of the thread. I also wanted to point it out, however, I was doing that on the flat. You can also, at this point, put the wheel into our trimming stand which is, in this case, the bicycle turned upside down and the wheel dropped in place. So I'm going to continue tightening up the uh, nipples uh, so that they line up with the end of the thread. From the outside of the rim, I'm turning the spoke clockwise to tighten it. Now all the nipples line up at the end of the thread. And as you can see, the wheel is pretty round at this point right off the bat. Uh, we're less than a millimeter out in terms of round and what we're going to do is start tensioning the wheel up and bringing the wheel into what we call dish. The wheel is way too far over to one side. I can fit two full fingers here and only one finger here. One of the things I'm always going to do is use the valve hole as a reference point. When I'm turning one spoke at a time on one side, I have to turn 18 spokes. I mean, starting at the valve hole, the first spoke hole that's at that side, I'm going to do one turn, two turns. Next one is skipping over one, one turn, two turns. Now I'm back to the valve hole. Here's my 18th. Now I've tightened up one side, two turns. As we can see, I've opened it up somewhat. Still have quite a bit of movement to bring the tension of the wheel over that way. Going to continue doing that. I'm actually going to do another two turns. When we're increasing the tension on this side and bringing the wheel so that it's dishing, it's also tightening the spokes on the opposite side by pulling them against them. So the whole wheel is tightening up as we tighten up even one side. So we're doing two things at once to repeat. We're centering the wheel and we're increasing the tension on the spokes. There's several ways to check how true the wheel is, that is how side to side, and how round it is looking at the wheel from the perspective on the, on the fork here like this. Round is if the wheel rises up and down. We don't want that. And we don't want the wheel to go side to side. As you can see, the wheel has a little bit of wobble on it at the moment. So what we're gonna do is something to make it easy to see how much 
in or out it is. I'm just taking a simple zap strap and nylon tie and I'm going to tie it to the fork. I've just trimmed it down a little bit so that it's not too long. You can trim it a little more or less depending on your fork. The gap between the end of my zap strap and the rim as it passes by is giving me the information that I need to know where to tighten or loosen the wheel. Just touching right there. So those spokes that are right in this area are the spokes that I want to correct. The spoke on the left side from where I'm standing, I will tighten. And the spoke on the same side, I will loosen in order to draw it away. Now I'll spin it again and no sound, no touching because I've drawn it away. Now I'm going to push the gauge in a little bit more, not touching. Still not touching. And just touching again. So high spots. Using the fork, we have taken two zap straps to show the lateral problem on the wheel. But round to round, we could use that. That's one possibility. Another possibility is to take a small little ruler. Heck, you could use a popsicle stick, you could use a pen, you could use anything you want. The idea is to elastic bend it or zap strap it as well, although a little more awkward to zap strap this particular configuration, onto the fork, thus having a gauge for how round the wheel is. If I pull it just away, I do the same idea of touching that the other one does. Uh, I can see the gap between the ruler and the rim. It's not exactly how uh, round it is with a nice screechy noise that when it's touching, that would be a high point on the wheel that needs to be tightened inwards. Every rotation, there's one little high spot there. Uh, so it's telling me that the spokes in this general area, particularly this one here where it's closest to the, to the mark, yeah, that one there, and I'm going to tighten it. There we go. That was the one. That was the one. And the wheel is pretty true. The wheel is round. As the spoke key turns, Sometimes the tension is so great that the spoke torques itself, twists a little bit. So we need to do what's called detensioning the wheel. At home, you could use a little hammer like this, a piece of wood, a bar, anything you can get your hands on. Insert the wooden handle into the spokes. Hold the wheel away from the point that you're doing. Give it a little bend. Did you hear that click? That was the spoke detensioning itself and twisting straight. Just enough to get that sound out of there. Go around and it stops, you're ready. Then you start the process again of making sure that your wheel is true. We don't have too much change here, but we do have a little bit out. So repeat the procedures that we showed before. Without the thing called a tensionometer to check the actual tension of the spokes, there's several ways to make sure that you're getting enough tension on the wheel to keep the wheel in good shape. A uh, tight wheel is a healthy wheel. So you want to have enough tension to the point where it's difficult for you to move the spoke key. This is going to depend on your hand strength and so on. Um, the other thing is to make sure that the wheel is consistently tensioned. So it's not just that it's tight enough, but that they are all about the same note as you go around. This is one way to do it. It's not the very best way, but at least if you find one spoke that's completely off, you'll know that you'll need to fix that area. We're here at Grin World Headquarters, the wheel department. We're all day long. I build motors, goddammit, for you people. And what I want to do is teach you a really simple, easy way to build motors that you can do at home, that I don't have to goddamn well do it here for you, all right? What I want is for you to understand that all those other videos out there, all those other crap videos about how to build wheels are all wrong. They show you how to build the wheel like it's a bicycle wheel. This is not a bicycle regular wheel. This is what you've got to fit into your wheel. 